Metal Slug is one of the most recognized run and gun games in the entire genre. It is well known for its simple but fun gameplay, gorgeous 2D graphics, impressive detailed animation, and light-hearted humor. Since 96, the series spawned multiple sequels and spin-offs, its characters made the jump to other SNK titles, and the franchise itself is trying to conquer new genres. But in this list, I'm sticking to the old school missile slugs. I'm not trying to make an inclusive list of every single game ever made, so please keep in mind that I'm gonna include mainline entries only, meaning from Metal Slug first of its name up to the seventh episode, with one exception, Metal Slug Advance. It plays just like other installments, so I decided to give it a spot as well. Also, Metal Slug 2 and 7 have upgraded versions titled X and Double X respectively. They share the same spot as their original versions, as I don't think that there are enough differences to be considered separate entries. Without further ado, here's the Metal Slug games ranked from worst to best. The only spin-off of this list. You would have probably never guessed this, but Metal Slug Advance was released and exclusive to Nintendo's Game Boy Advance. It dished the classic four main protagonists in favor for two new characters, Walter and Tyra. While still a run and gun game and plays much like the other titles, it brought interesting changes to the formula. The first one is the life system. In advance, the player will no longer lose a life after being hit. Instead, their life bar will be depleted and only when it gets totally empty that they lose their life. It's not an original concept by any means. Most beat them up and fighting games have this classic feature, but it is another thing in Metal Slug. Also, you can restore a chunk of your life bar upon picking food items. It's great to know that they do more than just boosting the score for once. However, falling in bottomless pits is still an instant death regardless of how much of the life bar remains. And when that happens, the player is brought to a previous checkpoint instead of respawning at the same spot. The other new innovation is the card system. During your adventure, you'll find many cards hidden in the game's five levels. These cards serve different purposes, from enriching the lore by having more info on characters, to giving concrete rewards that boost the player abilities. While the idea is interesting, frankly, I'm not a huge fan of this card system. Getting interrupted and taken away from the action to let you know that you picked this or that card each time you find one was pretty annoying. And while we're talking about the game's flaws, being on an inferior platform, technically speaking, Advance suffers from many slowdowns, not to mention the necessary graphical downgrade the game went through in order to run on the GBA. Regardless, Metal Slug Advance is still an enjoyable title and it's an entry that should be commended for trying something new. There is a general consensus among Metal Slug fans that the fourth episode was kind of a letdown, and I personally agree with that. Two words are always used to justify this statement. Reused assets. However, it is by no means synonymous of the game being a total failure. Metal Slug 4 does many things right and offers some unique features. For instance, two new playable characters, Trevor and Nadia, were added to the series and are to this day exclusive to the fourth episode. Of course, I'm only talking about the main games, though their inclusion came at the cost of the removal of two main staples of the series, Terma and Aerie, who were reduced to mere NPCs. Additionally, the player has the chance for the first time to pilot rebel vehicles and tanks, and that's pretty cool. Much like MS3 before it, the game includes branching routes, which is always a welcome feature and a good incentive for multiple playthroughs. In terms of music, it does its job for the most part, even though it's not nearly as memorable as the ones in previous installments. In conclusion, Metal Slug 4 is not a bad game by any means. In fact, if someone discovers the series with this entry, they'll most likely not understand why it is so low in this list. But for those who had played previous games, they cannot help but feel disappointed by its lack in originality and substantial amount of reused assets. Also, being the direct follow-up of Metal Slug 3, it just never had a chance. 
and with the game that started it all. The original Metal Slug was set apart from other titles of the same genre by its cartoonish design, super detailed stages and funny animation. The gameplay of Metal Slug is pretty simple too and it doesn't take much time for the player to get into. One button to jump, one to shoot and another to throw grenades. And that's all there is to it. You'll start each level or mission as the game calls it with a tiny pistol that has infinite ammo in addition of 10 grenades. Along the way, you can find power-ups in the form of stronger weapons such as heavy machine guns, shotguns, flamethrowers, additional grenades and... However, the best power of the game offers is the Missile Slug, the super vehicle that you can find in every stage that gives a considerable advantage in firepower and protection. The player will also be able to save prisoners of war scattered everywhere in the levels. There is no life gauge which means the slightest hit will cause the player to lose a life and when that happens, they lose all their power-ups and their POW count is reset to zero. Not everything is perfect though and the game has some minor flaws. The ones I can think of are the boss battles that were frankly not very exciting. Most of them can be destroyed in no time by spamming grenades if you manage to gather enough of them that is. And their design are also not the most original, often taking the form of giant tanks. In addition, there are only two playable characters with no option of freely choosing your avatar. Player 1 is always going to play as Marco, while player 2 is stuck with Terma. And since it's the first game in the series, there is only one type of vehicle the player can ride, the aforementioned Metal Slug. But honestly, none of that mattered at the time. The players were blown away by the gorgeous graphics, awesome soundtrack and fun gameplay that made the title an instant success and a solid foundation for future episodes. Metal Slug 6 was released in 2006 for the Atomis Wave, celebrating the 10th anniversary of the series. MS6 brought a lot of new stuff. Now the players can carry two power-up weapons simultaneously and switch between them with a simple press of a button. They can also choose to stock them and use their default gun if they prefer to hold onto them for an upcoming boss fight for example. In Metal Slug 6, characters have their own strengths and weaknesses. The difference is no longer just cosmetic as in previous games. For instance, Marco deals more damage with his default gun than the others. Fio always starts missions with a heavy machine gun as her default weapon and carries more ammo compared to the others. Terma is more efficient with the different slugs and takes a lot less damage when he operates them. Eri can change the trajectory of her grenades and always carries double their amount. In addition of our four regular heroes, two new characters join the series. Ralph and Clark from the King of Fighters became also playable and of course have their own quirks. Ralph can take two hits before losing a life but the ammo he carries is halved, while Clark can perform his iconic Argentine backbreaker against living enemies which grants him temporary invincibility. MS6 also introduces a new type of enemies, the invaders, which are the main villains of the game. And for the first time, the regulars, robbers, and mass people have to join forces to defeat this new threat. As for the game's shortcomings, there isn't really much to say, except that the stages look less detailed than in previous installments, and the new record of voices may not please everyone. Still, this is a very solid entry in the series, and incredibly fun to play. I mean you can ride the leader of the Mars people and shoot the invaders with him. Things can't get any cooler. Metal Slug 7 first saw the light of day on the Nintendo DS before it got ported later on other platforms as an upgraded version titled Metal Slug XX. The game builds upon what MS6 came up with. The same previous playable characters are still available just like before. Their personal attributes that distinguish them from each other are still present. MS7 adds a seventh playable character, Leona Hydern, the other member of the Ikari Warriors, joined the party originally as a DLC, but she is available from the start in the XX version. 
Of course, she has her own quirks as well. Leona is the only soldier who doesn't lose her power-ups when she dies, though she will lose them if her death leads to a continue. She also has her signature move, the Moon Slasher, which is super devastating, especially against tanks. And just like in KOF, Leona uses her earrings as bombs, a cosmetic feature true, but a very cool one nonetheless. Metal Slug 7 slash XX has 7 stages that all take place in the same island, and that is one of the shortcomings of the game. The levels are not very original and overall forgettable. As for the main villains, we have to deal again with the rebel army and their leader Morden. However, here's the twist. Later on in the game, our heroes will have to fight an alternative version of the rebel army that managed to come from the future to support their present counterparts. Faithful to the spirit of the series, their wacky weapons and outlandish equipment are just as dangerous as hilarious to look at. Shout out to the giant mech battle in level 6, one of the most epic moments in the franchise. Master Slug 7 slash double X is one of the hardest games in the series, probably the hardest, period. Enemies will ambush you all the time and the bosses will not go easy on you. Special mention to the final boss, the Kraken, an absolute monster that will put everything you learned so far in Metal Slug to an arduous test and then you'll most likely die of a timeout anyway. After the somewhat disappointing fourth episode, Metal Slug 5 came to save the day. As the last classic Metal Slug before the gameplay and art direction update, MS5 did have some reused assets as well, but they are not nearly as blatant as its predecessor. The original four main protagonists made their comeback, as Trevor and Nadia were dished in favor for Terma and Ares' return. Gameplay wise, a new feature was added. Characters can make a sliding move by pressing the jump button while crouching. It made our soldiers more mobile and was very useful in avoiding certain death in many occasions. Surprisingly, this feature remains to this day exclusive to MS5 as it was removed in future games. New slugs were also introduced in this episode, most notably the Slug Gunner, a tank that looks a lot like the Super Vehicle 001 but can transform into a bipedal walker, the giant spider-like mech found in the subway of level 5, and of course, the ultimate weapon of all time, the car or slugmobile. When it comes to music, the fifth episode opted for a heavy metal soundtrack. I can't say it's better than previous themes, but it sure fits the action. I must admit, the heavy metal remix of the Final Attack theme sounds so freaking epic. Metal Slug 5 brings a new type of enemies, the Ptolemaic army, and they are the main villains of the game. This is the only episode in the series where the rebel army is nowhere to be found. Unfortunately, the game suffers from cut content, more specifically, a boss fight against the leader of the Ptolemaic army that should have been there but didn't make it in the final release. There are also no supernatural elements like before, with the exception of the final boss, one gigantic mean demon named the Avatar of Evil, my personal favorite boss in the entire saga. This is the episode that I played the most personally. Metal Slug 2 improved upon every aspect from the first game while conserving everything that worked. Later on, an upgraded version of MS2 titled Metal Slug X was released with even more additions and changes, adding more weapon upgrades, new enemy types, changing some bosses, and many more subtle alterations. In Metal Slug 2, not only you can choose your avatar, but there are four of them this time. Eri and Theo joined the series with this episode. Transformations were included in MS2 as well. In Mission 2, the player could turn into a mummy if they're hit by the mummy's breath. This is synonymous of no longer being able to use weapon power-ups and have a slow walking speed. On the other hand, platform sections are easier while under this form as the mummy has a better jump control. You can revert to the human form of course by picking up one of the elixirs. One additional transformation present in the game is when the character gets fat after eating too much food. The change in gameplay is not as drastic as with the mummy transformation, but seeing that the weapons and ammo also became faster for some reason is pretty funny. 
New slugs were added to the game, these new additions being the SV Kamal that cannot be destroyed but doesn't offer any protection, the Slugnoid, perfect tool to shoot enemies below you, and the Slug Flyer, which is a fighter jet. The power-ups weapon the player can pick saw an expansion with the addition of the laser gun, fire bombs, armor piercer for the missile slug, and in the case of the X update, the enemy chaser, iron lizard, drop shots, super grenade, and the best of them all, stones. The infamous Mars people made their first debut in Missile Slug 2 as the allies of the rebel army before they betrayed them and became the true villains of the game, forcing the regulars and rebels to join forces for the first time in one epic final boss fight. You surely have already guessed this by now. Mesa Slug 3 is simply the best entry in the series and unanimously its magnum opus. Since it was supposed to be the final game in the series, the developers put their hearts and souls in its creation and it shows. Of course, I'm glad that the series didn't end there, but reaching this level of quality is yet to happen again. Mesa Slug 3 just set the bar way too high for all follow-ups. MS3 plays similarly to its other brothers. The four main heroes, Marco, Terma, Fio and Eri, don't have their own attributes yet, and it seems there are even less stages than before. Only five missions in MS3 as opposed to six in previous installments. But you would be terribly wrong to conclude that the game is shorter. One of its main innovations is the branching routes, a feature that made its debut with this episode. With new enemies, different weapons, original areas, these routes can be so different from one another that it's safe to consider them separate levels. The zombie transformation was also a cool addition. And at that stage, the character is a lot slower and can't use power-ups. On the other hand, they are immune to all attacks from non-zombie enemies and their grenade attack becomes a devastating screen-filling blood vomit. By the time the player reaches the final mission, they're actually only halfway through in the game. That final level is so long, but one hell of an epic ride. It has zero dull moments and goes from a twist to another. Going to space to fight the Mars people in their own mothership and the desperate breathtaking escape at the end is an experience you are not about to forget. MS3 does everything right. It's the run and gun genre in its perfect form, and that's why Missile Slug 3 is the best game in the series. Which game in this beloved franchise is your favorite? Share your answer with us in the comments. Special thanks to my patrons for their generous support. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, and why not consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.